Hi everyone! In this video tutorial I'd like to take a look at the chair conformer. So if we take a look at the board over here, this is an image of a chair conformer. So remember that this is a conformer of cyclohexane, a six-membered carbon ring in which all of the carbons are singly bonded to one another. So if we take a look at this then, the way it's currently drawn, we're only seeing two of the four bonds that each of the carbons here needs to make. So that would mean that each of these carbons has two additional substituents or groups that are attached to it. So now the placement of those is actually really important. You can't just kind of randomly draw them any way you want. There's a very specific way, either axial or equatorial. So now before we get into the details of those positions, let's first number our ring. So over here, by convention, you start at the carbon at the top here, and I call that carbon one. And then what you're gonna do is move around in a clockwise fashion. So I'd have carbon two, three, four, five, and six. So now I'm going to start with the axial position, and I like to start with carbon 1 for axial. The reason for that is carbon 1 is pointing up, and the axial position, which goes either up or down, starts here, and it's also, like this carbon, in an upward position. And now the thing that you're going to do is move around once again in a clockwise fashion, but you're going to do it in an alternating sort of way. Meaning that here on carbon 1, axial is up, so that means on carbon 2, axial would be down. 3 up, 4 down five up, six down. And these here are all of your axial positions. So now once you have your axial, you can then add on the equatorial. So what you want to know is that you're going to um, oppositely place axial and equatorial. So what I mean by that is if you have axial up, then you're going to want to have equatorial down. And equatorial is going to be placed in kind of this horizontal fashion. So over here on this position one, we see that we have axial up, which means that we're going to want equatorial down. Two, again alternating, up, three, down, four, up, five, down, six, up. And these ones here are our equatorial positions. So now, you may be wondering, why do I even care about this? And the reason for that is it can tell you a lot about stability based on where a substituent is positioned, especially if you have a really big bulky substituent. So now, a limitation of this drawing is that it looks like everything's really nicely spread apart, but the reality is that they're not at all. So what you're going to want to do is take a look here at position 5, position 3, and position 1. So now, even though those look quite spread apart, there are actually a lot of interactions that happen between those three positions. So if you have a big bulky group up here, it's going to have steric issues where you're going to have repulsion going on between one electron cloud and another electron cloud. And if you have repulsion going on, you're going to up the energy of that particular structure that you're looking at. And when energy goes up, stability goes down. So if you were given the option to draw the most stable conformer of a particular compound, you would choose to put a big bulky substituent into an equatorial position. Because in that equatorial position it has more room, and there's a lot less of that repulsive um, interaction happening between electron clouds. So now let's take a look at how we'd actually look at that in the context of a question. In this example we see that they're asking us to draw the most stable conformer of 1,5-tert butyl cyclohexane. So this question is about stability, and when we're talking about stability, what we're actually talking about is how have you placed the substituents? Did you correctly place them on an axial position or an equatorial position? Remembering that big bulky things are more stable when you put them on these equatorial positions. So now before actually beginning, let's first draw what the positions are. So remember by convention that's carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And so we are really interested in what's going on at carbon 1 and carbon 5. The next thing that we want to do is take a look at tert butyl. So you're going to want to know the structure for that. So tert butyl, right, is going to be a carbon that has three other carbons attached to it, and these will all just be methyl groups that are attached to it. And then this fourth attachment here, that squiggle, is the point at which it's going to actually attach to the ring. So now we can see that's a pretty big bulky group. So the first thing we want to do is on carbon 1, how are the axial and equatorial positions actually structured? So now, one thing to keep in mind, you do not have to memorize the entire ring structure. All you really have to know is how are things positioned on carbon 1, and from that you can get every single other thing. So now, when you have the conformer where position 1 is pointing up, because there is more than one chair conformer, on the case where the conformer has that carbon 1 position pointing up, we know that that is axial up, so then it would be equatorial down. 
And when we moved around, we know that's alternating. So on two, it would be down for the axial, three would be up, four down, and five would also be up axial, which means it also would have an equatorial down. So now you have two options on each of those carbons and you wanna figure out which one do I put my substituent on? So now, big bulky. We can either put it up in this axial position and this one also in an axial position. Then their electron clouds would overlap. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, if it leads to repulsion, as far as stability goes, that is a bad thing. So we know that we would preferentially put a big bulky group here on this equatorial position, and I'm not even worried about that guy. So on that end, it would be a hydrogen, which we don't have to draw in. Now, using the exact same logic over here, either axial, where it could interact, or over here where it has more room. And again, for stability's sake, we're gonna choose to give this more room. And once again, this becomes irrelevant. There is a hydrogen there, but we're not drawing it in. So this is how you would decide to draw your most stable conformer of a particular compound. So let's take a look at one more example. Okay, so now in this example here, we're asked to do pretty much the same thing, draw the most stable conformer. But in the last question, you were given flexibility. You could position those substituents relative to one another, however you liked. In this question now, there are limitations to how they can be placed. So if you take a look at this top-down view of this cyclohexane, we can see that they both have to be on the same side. They both have to be positioned up. So please keep in mind that this does not mean they both have to be axial or they both have to be equatorial. It just means that whatever's axial has to be up or whatever's equatorial has to be up. So that's the one thing to keep in mind. So now, if I take a look at this in the translation here, it doesn't matter which carbons you pick to do the drawing, but you have to make sure they are two adjacent carbons. So these two are adjacent. For ease, I'm gonna call this carbon one and carbon two, just because it's kind of easy to jump straight in for these guys, but you could put it wherever you wanted as long as they were adjacent to one another. So now we know that on carbon one, we have an axial up and an equatorial down. And then on position two, it's the opposite. It's gonna be axial down, equatorial up. So now this is where the limitations are gonna come in. We are told from this drawing that we have to draw a structure where everything is up which means that this equatorial down, I'm not gonna use, and in carbon two, I can't use this axial down. So one of them has to be axially up, and the other one has to be equatorially up. And the question is, which one? So now, if we take a look at this, this here is a tert butyl group, and this is a methyl group. As we've been talking about, the biggest, bulkiest groups are the ones that absolutely need to have the equatorial position if it's available. So this tert butyl is going to have priority over the methyl. So that means we're going to preferentially place it here on this equatorial position on carbon 2. So that means here I'm going to call this carbon 2 and this carbon 1. Which means then that the methyl is going to be more stable up here on this axial position right here. So remember, this isn't the only chair, but it is the most stable chair that we can form. And in this case, unlike the previous example, we had limitations, which is why I had to put a structure where something was axially placed. So those are some of the big points you wanna keep in mind when you're doing one of these kinds of problems.